Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which we simulate support structure modeling and failure. Support structures are used to mitigate the excessive distortion during powder bed processing. However, these structures are subject to the same forces that can distort the part. Our objectives in this tutorial are as follows. In NetFab, we model support structures for a geometry with a large overhang area. In NetFab simulation, we solve the part and the support structures. And then we analyze the simulation results for failure. So starting in NetFab, on the Prepare menu, we select Load Machine Workspace and then choose the generic Open Machine from the list. Then on the File menu, we select Add Part. And we add our sample file. Then on the Parts tab, make sure that Keep Parts Above Platform is not checked, and then click Create Supports. Now we move to the bottom of the Analysis tab, where we click Run Support Script, and select SLM, and click Execute. So this creates the lattice-like support structures. On the Analysis tab now, we click Accept. And then in the upper part of the browser, click Laser Melting Workspace. On the Simulation tab of this, we select Unify Support Volumes for Simulation. This option runs a simple repair process on the exported STL files that should improve the auto-generated mesh. If this box is not checked, poor STLs may be written, which could result in corrupted voxel meshes. Now at the bottom of the Simulation tab, we click Simulate Process. In the dialog that opens, enter a suitable file path and name, leaving in place the file extension .3mf. Now you'll see, after some time, the part is generated and opened inside Simulation Utility, and then the support structures are added. Now the build plate here is rather large, so we're just going to cut it down in size by snapping to X and Y. So now in the Simulation Utility Browser, we right-click on the support structure, which has a name that ends in hulled support underscore Tivis, and select Edit Geometry. We change the volume fraction value to 0 0.2. This specifies the amount of support volume that's occupied by physical structures rather than empty space. And now we're going to start configuring settings for the simulation. So on the Home tab, we click the Machine button, and then ensure that the machine model is set to Generic Open Machine, and the processing parameters are for InCanal 625. Click OK and then open the build plate settings. Here, deselect match part deposition material and from the material menu, select SAE 304. Click OK and open the mesh settings. Set the minimal wall thickness to 2 millimeters. Click OK and open the solver settings. On the Analysis tab, select Include Support Structure Failure Criteria and set the Support Structure Failure Criteria to 1000 megapascals. At this point, we're ready to solve the simulation, so click Solve and choose the Local option. You will be prompted to save the file in a suitable location.
and then load the results when they become available. For the first part of our analysis now, we'll go to the Results tab and click View Logs and look for evidence of support structure failure. In the Log Files dialog, click the Mechanical tab and scroll to the end. And here we see 19 warnings in the simulation. And we can scroll up through the log to identify the causes of these warnings. Note the multiple instances of support structure failure. Now in the main window, we'll view the effects of support structure failure on the simulated build. In the browser, use the light bulb icons to show only the structure type results, turning off any part and support light bulbs in the geometry section. If we move the animation slider to near the end, we can now clearly see the color codes for structure types. Zero is the build plate, two is the part, four is the support structure, and most important, five is the failed support structure marked in red. Now use the light bulb icons to switch to the displacement results. And to see these more clearly, we'll click the plot settings button. Select warp by displacement and change the displacement scale to 5, which will exaggerate any displacement by a factor of 5. Note the separation that appears along the interface between part overhang and support structure. You may want to examine the part from different angles and zoom in for a closer look. Another option is to go into the mechanical log files, find one or more time increments that generated support structure failures, and enter those time values into the time field for the animation, so you can see what the build looked like at that time. To summarize what we did in this tutorial, we modeled support structures for a part in NetFab and exported these to simulation utility. We configured the simulation and solved it. And finally, we analyzed the simulation results for support structure failure.